$40,000 commission to represent the seller on this building, and they never even asked me to show them the money. They never asked the question. It is. It's absolutely ridiculous. They, 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 they signed an agreement of sale allowing me to take the building off the market, and they never said, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Falcone, but uh, if you were going to buy a building for $2.1 million, you should have about, what, half a million in the bank? You'd like to see it? <laughs> they never asked. So I couldn't believe it. I ran home. And I, I'm, a, I'm a licensed agent, primarily to do my own deals. I ran home. I put up eight buildings for sale immediately and did like a fire sale. And I, and I got lucky. Four of the buildings I had that each had approximately 100 grand in equity in them, some of them were buildings I had owned from early in my career. All four of them sold. So I had 400 grand just like that. In fact, the first time I met a lot of people in this room, a dog and a Neil, I stood up at the commercial real estate meeting to tell the story. And uh, so I had 400 grand out of 475 I needed. Well, when you buy like a duplex, uh, everybody knows the last month's rent and the security deposit gets transferred to you as settlement. Well, this joint had a $40,000 a month rent. So they were holding 60 grand in last month's rent and security deposits. So I simply said to the title company, I'll just have that transferred over to me at settlement. So now I have 460. I literally showed up, I had 10 grand in the bank, I showed up with $15,000 and bought a uh, $2.1 million building. So um, I like to share that story with people to, to tell them, you know, people who are thinking about buying commercial real estate that it's, that it's possible, you know, you almost have to be a little crazy and just keep looking at stuff that you probably uh, can't buy or shouldn't buy or, or nobody would sell it to you and you can see what happens if somebody just might. And, uh, anyway, it's like uh, taking greenhouses and converting them into red hotels. You're playing Monopoly for real. It's a real estate business. So um, uh, this is something I like to uh, share with people. Uh, anybody know what this is? Yep. QR codes? Everybody know who's got a who's got a smartphone? Scan it for me. It takes you right to my website. You know, I, I think one of the things that landlords and real estate investors uh, miss in a lot of cases is uh, they, they they don't have very good marketing plans. So uh, one of the things I do is try to share some of the marketing stuff that I do. Uh, I'm out there making videos, web TV shows, and and everything I can to promote my business. I'll show you some of that tonight. But um. I, I, I'll talk about a little bit tonight because I want to get to the 2020 vision. I'll tell you a little bit about a real estate deal that I just did. Uh, in Northeast Philadelphia, um, this property is at the corner of uh, Grant and the Boulevard. I don't know if anybody knows that neighborhood, but it's 110,000 cars a day going down this road. This is a serious intersection. So uh, this building was for sale for two years at $3.5 million. And late in 2010, they dropped the price to 2.5 million. It took a whole million right off of it. So all of a sudden, activity like crazy on it. Uh, so uh, I went to look at it, because that's what I do. I, I try to look at commercial buildings every two to three weeks. I try to look at something, even though I'm not actively looking to buy anything right now. If I find the right deal, I want to jump all over it. And if you don't stay in the game, if you don't keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on, in the commercial world, then you might you might miss a real home run that's out there. So I went to look at it, and I'm competing against, I don't know, seven or eight other people, Walgreens and all these major corporations, and then there's little old me. And I'm the only guy who's planning to use the buildings as is. Uh, everybody else was planning to knock it down and go through some long drawn out process to get approval to build whatever it was they were gonna build. So. That actually put me in a very strong position. Because all these other guys that were building, bidding on this building, they needed, uh, they needed like 18 months to make sure that they could get the approvals they needed. I didn't need approval for anything. I wasn't changing the zoning. I was using the building exactly as it was. So, what's that? What's the limited consistencies? Right, I didn't, I didn't need that, right? So, I got this uh, private lender that I work with whenever I'm doing big deals. I write about him a lot in my book. His name's Vlad. And I brought him in to look at the deal. And him and I, we 
we don't just look to invest in real estate. We're looking to have fun in this business. We love to torture commercial realtors. We love to, to torture owners of commercial property. Have a good time with this, because this is going to be a lot of fun. So uh, what, we, what we said to the owners of this building, because we felt we were pretty strong and offers were coming in in $2.2 .2 million range. We said, I'll tell you what, we know that you guys need us because uh, Obama was raising, or at least at the end of last year, it was believed that Obama was going to raise the capital gains tax five points, and that would have cost them an extra $100,000. So they wanted to settle fast in 2010. So we said, here's the deal. Uh, we don't feel like you're getting into a bidding work, so uh, we want you, the sellers, to go back and come back to us with an absolute best number you've got. And we're going to either say yes or no. So it was like a whole board of directors, people owned this building. They took like a week to get back to me. They got back to me $1,875,000. So just to torture them, we took three weeks to think about it. <laughs> and uh, I finally went back to them and I said, um, we'll give you $1.4 million for it. Well, the guy like, you know, blew a head gasket. So what the hell you, you told me? Give me your best number, we'll say either yes or no. I said, yeah, this is my way of saying no. <laughs> now, um, he told me to go, uh, I can't tell you what he actually told me to do, but I didn't, get the, I didn't get the building, but that's fine. Because in this economy, I didn't want the damn building unless I was stealing it from him, right? I had to be getting such an amazing deal that, that there was no way I'd be sorry about it. There was no way I'd, I'd be concerned about it. So, I didn't get it. He claims to have another buyer, yet the building's still sitting there. I don't know what's going on with it. But, um, you know, you can, you can have fun with this stuff. I, I think I was closer than he leads to believe, but we'll find out, see what happens with it. So, uh, this is my website. Uh, I have a space above this video where you can put in your name and email address. I put out a lot of free information about real estate commercial real estate, residence real estate, all kinds of stuff that I'm doing. And if you put your name and email address in uh, on the front page of my website, uh, you'll get this web TV show that I'm producing. And I'm also giving out some free investment forms. This is a video, <laughs> this is a video of me. Uh, if you got my web TV show, you'd already have seen this. I went down to Washington, D.C. to straighten those fools out <laughs> about what's going on with the real estate market. And uh, uh, what else do I got here? This is another uh, TV show that I did with Jeremy Ricci over here. Jeremy and I do a lot of deals together, and he's helped me come up with the uh, 2020 vision that I'm going to share with you tonight. And, uh, and he's helping me uh, implement it. We're working together on a lot of deals. What we did with this video, The Apprentice, these two kids were always calling me up saying, you know, they were coming to real estate meetings, they kept saying, how do we buy, how do we buy real estate? We got tired of listening to them asking questions. So I said, here's the deal. We sat them down in this room, we gave them a homework assignment to do. We told them exactly how to buy it, exactly what to do. And uh, you have to stay tuned for future episodes to see what these kids come up with. So I also give away some free investor forms if you put your name and email address. Uh, there I have, uh, this is a form I use to evaluate properties. This is a form I use to, uh, I call it the equity tracking chart. And basically what it is is, you know, I understand landlord's pain, okay? You guys are probably equity rich and cash poor, like me. So I like to keep track of exactly what my net worth is doing. So that's what this chart does. Uh, it keeps track of all your principal payments every month and, 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 and gives you something to feel positive about watching your net worth uh, go up. I also have like uh, applications for apartment buildings, which I give you there. And uh, just real quick, I'm going to touch on uh, something I like to talk about, which is uh, the theory of association. And theory of association, you become the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. Okay, so uh, you want to make sure that you don't hang around with, with guys like this. Guys. And, uh, I love to share this idea because I first heard about it when I was in my 20s. And uh, basically you're supposed to disassociate with people who have a negative impact on you and associate with people that have a positive impact on you. So the first thing I did was I got rid of all of my friends. <laughs> And then I, I, I decided that one of my friends was 
kind of like marginally acceptable. So I called him up and, uh, and I started to spend some time with him. And he had a friend that was marginally acceptable. So I started hanging around with these two guys. And one of these guys was a realtor, a very smart guy. And he taught me a technique of how to buy houses, which I used. Uh, I tweaked it, I twisted it, I turned it into my own. And I used it to buy dozens and dozens and dozens of residential property. So for me, I heard this silly little theory from an audio tape. And uh, my life improved like a rocket ship. So I love to share that idea with people. So in case any of you guys are thinking about getting rid of all your friends, I would endorse that idea. Uh, here's my green screen studio. Where what do you say to the friends that you leave behind? You don't have to. You don't have to have any adversarial discussions with them. You just stop spending time with them. That's it. You become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So don't spend time with them. You can still talk to them once in a while. You just have to limit it. Okay? I still talk to some of my friends who have negative uh, impact on me, but I, I keep it turned in. Okay. This is my green screen studio where I make all my TV shows. If any of my dick buddies ever want to produce a video for your business, your new buddy Phil Falco will help you out. I rent this studio out, but for dick people, I'll help you out and make the first one uh, for free. Uh, this is a picture of a suitcase full of money. I use that as proof of funds whenever I'm buying an REO. <laughs> People always go, I'm buying it for cash. I go, yeah, I'm buying it for cash. Yeah. Well, where's your proof of funds? I email them this picture. <laughs> hey, where's your proof of cash? There you go. Um, uh, real quick, I'll talk about something I do that a lot of people don't do. I call it multiple profit generators, all right? Most landlords, they rent their apartments, and then they're so proud of themselves, and they're patting themselves on the back, and they're walking out the door. And I'm, and I'm here to tell you, you got to stop, okay, because you're leaving a lot.